Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the first source, first source Solutions Limited Q4 FY23 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participants' lines will be in a listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchdown phone. Please note this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ankur Maheshwari for, from First Source Solutions Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Vikram. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the quarter ended March 31st, 2023 earnings call for First Source. To take us through the results and answer query, we have with us today Mr. Sukhanna and Vinesh Chen of the CFO, uh, and the CFO. Do note that the results, the fact sheet, and the presentation have been emailed to you, and you can also view this on our website, www.firstsource.com. Before we begin the call, please note that some of the matters we will discuss on this call, including our business outlook, are forward-looking, and as such, are subject to known and unknown risks. These uncertainties and risks are subject to, uh, sorry, are included but not limited to what we have mentioned in our prospectus, pilot study, and subsequent annual reports that are available on our website. With that said, I hand the call over to Mr. Kul Khanna to begin the proceeding. Thanks, Ankur. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. Uh, Ankur and Dinesh, I'm coming across clear and okay? Yeah, yeah. Yes, you are. Okay, all right. Very good. All right. I will, uh, let me start by giving you an overview of our fourth quarter performance. This quarter, our revenues degrew 2.8% year on year in constant currency and came in at INR uh, 15,568 million or 190 million US dollars. This implies a growth of 2.5% quarter on quarter in constant currency. Operating margins improved by 21 bits year on year and 220 basis points sequentially to come in at 11.6%. I'd like to reiterate that our margin performance in H1 was an aberration and the corrective actions that we've taken have brought us back to a normalized margin range. The diluted EPS in Q4 grew by 7.3% year on year and came in at INR 2.02 for this quarter. For the fiscal 23, we recorded revenues of INR 60,223 million or $750 million, implying a constant currency degrowth of 1.1% over fiscal 22. Excluding mortgage and acquisitions, we achieved constant currency growth of 13.7% year on year. Operating margin for the year was 9.4%. These numbers are firmly in line with our recent guidance. This year was clearly challenging as our unique business mix was negatively impacted by unprecedented macroeconomic cyclicity. We refined our long-term strategy to ensure that our go-forward business mix is more balanced and can better manage these external variabilities and also position us for more sustainable longer-term growth. Uh, as a quick reminder, the key components of our strategy are, one, to diversify within the DFN and CMT verticals, and expand into select new subsegments of healthcare and CMT with the overall goal of reducing exposure to macro cyclicity and driving the next phase of our growth. Two, drive growth in our chosen verticals by building adjacent capabilities, by systematically adding new clients, and by growing uh, existing strategic accounts. And three, leveraging our digital tools and services to create more cost efficiency and build new digitally powered solutions. We are as much focused on harnessing rapid uh, developments in AI, in AI, especially generative AI. Against this strategic framework, we had a number of critical achievements during fiscal 23. Let me first start with the theme of diversification. In BFS, we made good progress in going the collections and UK BFS segments. We are pleased with the organic constant currency growth of 18.3% in our BFS portfolio X mortgage. In CMT, we reduced our concentration of our top client from 80% of CMT revenues in fiscal 22 to 70% in Q4 of fiscal 23, but consciously growing the other parts of this segment. Excluding the top client, 
This portfolio has grown strongly at 44% year-on-year, led by growth in edtech, tech, and collections in the communication segment. We continue to build new capabilities in adjacent areas, for instance, FinCrime Ops in BFS and extending our digitally empowered contact center solution for the edtech world to drive a better learner uh, CX. We launched our consulting practice idea and our data integrity practice. In the first year, we converted four consulting engagements to annuity contracts. The IT segment within the diverse vertical grew nicely 43% year-on-year, albeit in a small base, on the back of our uh, DECX, or Digitally Empowered Contact uh, Center uh, offering, its maturity and digital connections. Let's talk briefly about our delivery ecosystem. We expanded our delivery footprint to two new geographies, Mexico and South Africa and further strengthened our Philippines operations to help address the increasing challenge of sourcing the right talent and the client need for greater value extraction. Now, we are present in six countries. And finally, driving growth through new client uh, additions and systemat uh, systematic account mining. We added 73 clients, new clients this year, and we did well to expand most of our key relationships across non-mortgage BFS, CMT, and uh, HBHS. Our approach for fiscal 24 continues to refine these building blocks. As we look forward to the start of the new fiscal, I'm confident that we have reduced cyclicality in our business, even as the global economic environment and sentiment is increasingly uncertain. From a current vantage point, we are expecting to achieve constant currency growth of 2 to 5% in fiscal 24 with an operating margin range of 11 to 12%. This factors in a sequential decline in Q1 followed by steady growth from Q2 onwards. This guidance assumes a 3% revenue headwind from our mortgage business given H1 of 23 was higher than H2 of 23. A 3% revenue headwind from our onshore offshore estate rebalancing. I have spoken previously about our intent to grow offshore more meaningfully. I'm pleased with the progress. We are in advanced discussions with a couple of key clients to realign their onshore offshore footprint during this fiscal year. While the absolute revenues realized will decline due to billing rate differential, we expect the margins to expand. Operating margins will benefit from the multiple initiatives in fiscal 23 to take cost out and protect margin erosion. We are now back to our normalized margin range. The key levers that we have factored in our operating margin guidance are margin recovery across mortgage business and uh, the acquired businesses, onshore offshore rebalancing, and growth in our digital service line. Operating margins should remain in our desired range through this year. Let's talk in detail about the key trends in an industry segment to give you a better color on our growth drivers. Starting with mortgage, the last 12 to 18 months have been turbulent for this industry to say the, way, to say the least. The mortgage segment clearly took the bulk of the mindshare for both you and us alike. We believe that the industry has moved past the worst of the volatility triggered by this unique economic cycle. Interest rates have been moving within a narrow range, and the industry expects a modest pickup in volume over the next 12 months. We are confident that we can manage any further volatility without a material impact on our overall performance, especially considering that this segment now contributes less than 9% of our overall revenue. For our portfolio, we also believe that volumes have more or less bottomed out, and we should not see a material decline unless there is a significant shift in the macro environment. We continue to focus on adding new clients and scaling capabilities to accelerate diversification beyond origination. Most of the pipeline activity currently is around servicing and capital markets. For fiscal 24, we are projecting mortgage to operate closer to our Q4 fiscal 23 exit run rate for H1, and then moderate growth in H2 based on recent wins and current pipeline. In the collection segment, the consumer credit metrics continue to soften, which is a positive for our business. Overall, U.S. card debt delinquencies rose to 2.25% versus 2.09% in the last quarter, and the charge-offs were at 2.55% versus 2.11% in the last quarter. 
Over the last couple of weeks, most of the large US banks declared their Q1 calendar 23 earnings. The consistent themes across these commentaries were, one, consumer debt is now higher than pre-pandemic and credit tightening has begun. Two, consumer balance sheets are still quite strong and remain near all-time high driven by low unemployment rates and high wages. And three, delinquencies while still below 2020 levels are expected to rise. The provisions made for credit losses by these banks are gradually climbing each quarter. Considering the above trends, we expect our collection business to witness a gradual recovery throughout the year. The sales activity and the new client additions remain strong, and we added six new clients in Q4 of fiscal 22. For fiscal 24, our key priorities for the collection business are, one, we continue to diversify collections as a multi-industry offering with penetration into fintech, auto, and across telecom and utilities. Expand geographically to the UK. Three, stay focused on the digital collections platform's roadmap and reduce new client onboarding timeline. And four, drive revenue and margin growth in our legal collection segment. UK BFS continues to deliver strong growth. We are actively pursuing expansion across our key banking relationships by penetrating into new divisions and focusing on growing offshore. There is continued focus on digitization of contact centers through quality collection to self-serve and chat. We continue to see good growth in fin crime operations as well. The growth in UK BFS has helped us diversify in the broader BFS segment and de-risk from mortgage concentration. We expect the momentum to continue well into fiscal 24 with a sharp focus on new client additions and more offshore business activity. Shifting to healthcare, this segment remains steady. The business continued to grow well and clocked an 8.7% year-on-year growth uh, for fiscal 23 in constant currency terms. The growth rate has slowed down primarily from conclusion of project-based engagements, delays in deal closure, and continued softness in the provider segment. A provider business has witnessed significant headwinds over the last couple of years due to the public health emergency enforced by the U.S. government. As per the recent government notification, the PHE or the public health emergency will finally be lifted on May 11, 2023, so in a week from now, fingers crossed. Ending the automatic Medicaid enrollment provision that has been, plain, uh, that has been in place since 2020. This change is expected to result in an estimated 5 to 14 million people losing their Medicaid coverage. A large part of this segment is likely to be uninsured, a segment our eligibility services and patient access practice focus on. We expect strong growth vectors to emerge from this change in H2 of uh, uh, fiscal 24. In the health plan segment, uh, we are witnessing somewhat of a slowdown in deal closures, especially where the solution involves significant transformation or digital intervention. Having said that, the deal pipeline remains strong. We've seen good traction proactively working with the clients in moving parts of value chains offshore. We continue to scale our capabilities and have made small starts in the higher value appeals and grievances and claim automation segment. For fiscal 24, our focus for the healthcare segment is to reverse the revenue decline in provider and scale offshore across both provider and HPHS. Over the last 12, 18 months, we've had several marquee wins in our digital intake practice in HPHS. Now the focus is on wrapping up these engagements and further strengthening the digital intake platform. And the last piece, uh, last piece I'll mention is that we are going aggressively in the plan B plus market to build on the uh, couple of wins we've had in the last the 18 months. The CMT segment continues its strong growth trajectory. In fiscal 23, the segment grew 14% year on year in constant currency. We've done well on two areas. One, scaling our US CMT, US CMT business, which we've been incubating and building from scratch organically. This segment is now more than 4% of the overall revenues and growing nicely. This remains one of our key priorities for fiscal 24, and we expect to see meaningful growth in this segment. And second, adding new capabilities and markets. Over the last, uh, over the last two years, we've successfully made inroads into edtech, digital media, and tech verticals. We've added several marquee clients and are witnessing good growth momentum here. And finally, our relationship with our top client remains strong. 
During the year, we added high-value work offshore, underpinned by increasing client confidence in our capabilities. We continue to explore new growth opportunities in their estate. It's been a while since we spoke about our diverse business segment. This segment primarily focuses on utilities and other industries which are still early stages for us and where we are evolving our strategy and offerings. You would recollect us winning a deal with one of the top three utility providers in the UK a few years ago. Our relationship has significantly strengthened since and we are today one of their top three outsourcing partners. We expect this relationship to grow considerably in fiscal 24 on the back of the recent wins they've had with the client. We are in the process of expanding our delivery footprint to South Africa with the Santa client and then extend to other UK and US clients. We feel good that we now serve two of the top five UK utility companies. In summary, while fiscal 23 was a challenging year for our cyclical businesses, we are pleased with the progress in building the rest of the business, diversifying our portfolio, and progress on our digital offerings. We look forward to updating you over the coming quarters and progress against the strategy. Let me now hand over the call to Dinesh to give an overview uh, of our financial results. Thank you, Ipul. Good morning, everyone. Here is a quick snapshot of our financial for the quarter and full year ended March 31st, 2023. Revenue for the fourth quarter came in at 15,568 million or 190 million dollars. This implies a year-on-year -year growth of 0.8% in revenue terms and constant currency terms degrowth of 2.8%. For the full year, revenue came in at 60,223 million or dollars 750 million, implies a year-on-year -year growth of 1.7% in rupee term and constant currency term degrowth of 1.1%. On a margin front, operating margin came in at Rs. 1,799 million or 11.6%. This is an expansion of 220 basis point quarter on quarter. For the year, margin came in, operating margin came in at 5,633 million or 9.4%. Profit after tax came in at Rs. 1,413 million or 9.1% of the revenue for the quarter a year-on-year -year margin improvement of 50 basis points. For the year, paid came, uh, profit after tax came in at rupees 5,137 5, million or 8.5%. Our cash generation always remained strong. We generated 7,634 million cash from operation and our free cash flow was 7,120 million after adjusting for capex of 514 million. The closing cash balance, including including investment, stood at 2000 or 2111 million. Net debt stand at 6159 million of 75 million dollars, which, in compared to last year, almost at 26 percent lower. Last year, our debt was 8013 million or 106 million dollars. DSO came in at 60 days versus the 61 days last quarter. Tax rate for the full year is was around 16.5%. For the FY24, we expect to be range of 18 to 20%. And in that, we also factor that you guys are aware that UK tax rate is moving from 19% to 25%. So that will have also the some percentage increase in the tax rate which we are paying. On our forex hedging, we have coverage of GBP 44 million for the next 12 months with the average rate of 102 rupees to the pound and coverage of $60 million with average rate of 84 rupees to a dollar. For 12 to 24 months, we also done some coverage on pound book, which is 12.5 million pound with an average rate of 105 rupees to the pound. In addition, we also take some of the option product which to realize it better forward rates. And those are the option product which does not have any uh, impact due to the uh, currency movements to the negative side. This is all from my side. Now I'll open up for the Q&A and move back to the moderator. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star then two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. We will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles to ask question. Please press star one now.
We take a first question from the line of Rahul Jain from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just wanted to uh, get a little bit clarity on the uh, operating margin side uh, outlook that you have shared. Uh, based on you know uh, the kind of uh, savings uh, that you have done uh, in this uh, course of quarter and you seeing growth coming back into the business and uh, so uh, from that perspective uh, uh, you think this 11 to 12 percent margin uh, is a bit on the conservative side or you think some more uh, cost factor that would you need to take care during the course of the year, which makes you think that this is the ideal margin for you for the next year. Uh, hi, Rahul. Um, so look, operating margin, uh, as we said, we've steadily been improving after a, a, a very rough uh, H1. Q4 was 11.6% and we got into 11.12% for the year. I think we've done well on the cost discipline and aligning our cost uh, to to uh, the, the business volumes that we had, especially mortgage. Um, as we go into the next year, as you said, there will be some growth, uh, you know, decent growth sort of coming sort of virtually across segments. Um, but we also want to be uh, cautious against the uncertainties in the economic environment, right? Uh, the environment is fairly dynamic. So we want to make sure that we are uh, cognizant of that. Um, there were some elements of our um, uh, growth investments that we had moderated out in the last year. I think we'll also kind of go back to some of that. So that's kind of another put into it. Um, and, and overall, I think uh, we feel good that we're starting off a good base. And if we can get the momentum through the year, we should be able to kind of meet, uh, meet this uh, uh, profit margin, the operating margin. Right, right. Uh, and second question, uh, you said about this uh, public uh, health emergency uh, getting uh, finally <coughs> taking a pause. So from this perspective, uh, is this uh, is there any uh, understanding from past or uh, any feeler you are getting uh, from the conversation that how this could shape up? You are expecting it to pick up in H2, but uh, how is the general behavior and uh, any reading on that, that yeah. how it should go back? Sure. So, so look, I think the central government is making it, uh, devolving it to the states to figure out how they want to um, roll back this, uh, you know, roll back this requirement of automatic enrollment. So every state will, will take its own course, obviously it will be driven by political and philosophical considerations of each state. Uh, so it will be kind of a gradual roll-off. Um, at a simplistic level, uh, we think the demand will come in two, two ways, right? One will be a catch-up demand for people. Um, as they fall off, they will be like, okay, quick, go and catch up there. And then there will be a more settling in of a new equilibrium or getting the equilibrium back to sort of the, the old um, pre-COVID days, right? So, so I think there will be a little bit of a, a bumpy demand to catch up, and then you'll settle into a new routine. Um, we are having great conversations as states, uh, plans, as well as providers get ready for, for this fallout to start happening. Uh, some of them are preparing. Some of them are proactively engaging. We've had some wins for getting ready for uh, both health plans and providers to catch the fallout so that they don't lose revenue, right? Because each time somebody falls off, it's revenue loss for them. Uh, so we, we see that sort of decent demand coming through. So we'll see wins. We'll see traction, but I think the revenue will start to come more towards H2 in this segment. Sure, sure. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take a next question from the line of Mohit Jain from Anand Durati. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Three questions. First is, uh, if you could help me understand this growth uh, in telecom outside top client and then others diverse segment. Uh, is there a one-off or something that you have experienced this quarter, uh, given the growth guidance, or do you think this can continue? So that's one, and then I have two follow -ups. Uh So no, in both, uh, this has been a very uh, ground-up, as I said, ground-up organic build. So it started from small wins, uh, like the utility example, started with one-off win where we were one of the challenger partners. 
we've gradually earned the right to be like the, the main partner now and others kind of shift to the challenger thing um and and it's a the growth that we've seen is on a long term sort of annuity contract Uh, so on the utility side it's not one off and on the strength of that we won a second second top 5 client it will again start small but at least we can diversify with the mainstream offerings out there likewise the on the is done uh, or will it continue in one queue as well the the ramps will kind of continue through okay into uh, into the next fiscal yeah and you were talking uh, about telecom thing Ah, uh, same. Uh, so there are the segments that we've been focused on, uh, whether it's the non non UK communications or the ed tech and tech segments. That's been slow, gradual builds, uh, organic. Uh, so the wins are they started small. Some of them are starting to look like one of the, as I mentioned, one of the uh, ed tech clients that we had signed in the education testing space. You know, when I add up everything that we signed up. it's a good 5 year 15 16 million dollar tcd now right so it's kind of coming to be a big client and basis that we kind of go back uh, to to the market for sort of the meaningful events so this is in the us in general, or europe no one of them. us okay so telecom outside a uh, top line we should see more like us growth than europe growth there is some europe growth as well but more uh, more pronounced in the us right sir and the second one was your guidance now uh, why there should be a decline in one queue meaning i was just getting could be collections maybe uh, but if there is no one off uh, then what yeah. uh, what is giving us that decline ah, okay. and subsequently the sure. growth appears relatively slow uh, at say 4% midpoint uh, for next year thank you so couple of reasons for that um one there is an element of seasonality from collections and open enrollment from hphs which will paper down in in q1 second there was some project based work uh, especially in healthcare which has wound down and is winding down that will have some impact and then finally you know the large bpass deal in hphs that we had announced it had a it had an implementation phase which had meaningful revenue that phase has come to an end and now we are into steady state so that also has an impact on the the start of the hphs uh, revenue those are the three um, main factors for uh, q1 being uh, uh, somewhat lower than q4 so mostly driven by healthcare decline uh, rest of the verticals are fine healthcare and uh, some amount of seasonality in collections collections right and sir guidance at 4% like uh, we are coming off a very low base Uh, is there like some ramp down etc which are anticipating on the market and stuff uh, because i thought we would probably do uh, around 5 at least at the midpoint so yeah and 2% is also no. like more more flattish so so mohit uh, as i said uh, we have identified and called out two headwinds one is the year on year decline from mortgage uh, because h1 started strong right right now we are assuming q4 run rate uh, expanding with some moderate growth in in h2 for for mortgage so that's about a 3% headwind year on year and then we have the unusual uh, almost revenue decay of about 3% from the onshore to offshore movement now that's a proactive strategy uh, we have been vectoring our growth new growth for offshore but in our existing portfolio we have this movement um, which will which is most likely to come into uh, this year so we wanted to call it out at this stage that in a couple of clients will see this movement so that's another 3% and at this 6% to the to the midpoint that you for instance that you picked up we start to get into sort of late single digit uh, uh, early double digit sort of growth trajectory but these are the two exceptional things which we are calling out okay and the last one for dinesh sir uh, is there any payout left for fy24 or are we more or less done with the payout related to acquisitions and the subsidiary stake acquisition related all there was no payout done uh, because the, we have already uh, they have not achieved the target date so that has been closed for both the acquisitions so there is no more pending on that on the equity related there is a one more a revenue target which they have to achieve in fy24 and on that basis there is a payout for that 
but as of today i think it's a whole year available and where we still have discussion with them going on how much revenue they will be going to bring on the table and accordingly we'll come back as we get a more uh, during the year but this amount was 11 odd million dollars for 24 no 24 will be i think 4 and 1/2 million dollars and then 25 will have another payout no they not so only the fy24 is the one year which has been left okay perfect sir thank you thank you we take a next question from the line of shraddha from amsec please go ahead yeah hi vipul congrats on a good quarter um, just on the guidance bit again uh, so what is the kind of decline that we are expecting in one q uh, sequential decline yeah sequential decline at this stage we think it will be between 1 to 2% maybe slightly yeah through that range 1 and 3% or let's call it 1 to 2 and a half percent okay so this is primarily related to the um, project work uh, round down that we are expecting in healthcare healthcare the implementation phase being over for a large program and then the uh, seasonality of uh, collections because if the we seasonality of right so if we talk of a say 2 1/2 3% decline in one q then i think starting to queue to get to the mid end of the guidance he would have to do some heavy lifting so uh, what kind of visibility do we have to be talking of you know achieving the mid end of the guidance if we are talking of a 3% kind of a decline in one queue yeah so so the way we are looking at it it translates to a tqgr of about 3 and a half to 5% uh, sure. from q2 yeah. to q4 Mm-hmm. right uh, in those three quarters mm-hmm. i think um if we think about the collections i think it will build up we we are seeing signs for that um we have good good traction in the healthcare segment from a deal closure standpoint which we know is under implementation and as we get into q2 we'll start to see revenue kind of booked from there i talked about growth coming back to providers right so we've been conservative for h1 for provider we think it should result into something meaningful in uh, in provider and then our new businesses that we are talking about right now obviously they're on small base so we are expecting pretty good revenue growth from them um so i think we add up all that we feel pretty good about the guidance that we're giving at this stage um the newer businesses obviously you know that um they are still pretty young uh the pipeline is building so to that extent the pipeline is binary in the sense you don't have a big pipeline that if you uh, even if you lose you know two thirds of the deal and even one third of the deal you'll kind of get your numbers today when you have smaller pipeline is binary if we have some good wins right we should have better numbers if we don't that's what we model in at this stage on the 2 to 5 percent guidance so i'm trying to give you colors of the different businesses and how we think it will play out through the year uh, to get to that Three and a half, five percent. So it is based on more of hope of recovery in second half because the seasonality collect the collection business seasonality will play out and the healthcare provider segment or growth will play out only in the second half. So maybe we are talking of uh, you know very high growth rates in three Q and four Q, and that is just based on hope of recovery, right? I mean, rather than um, anything concrete in the deal pipeline as such currently. no i wouldn't say that i wouldn't say that what what the growth even even for provider when i'm talking about h2 growth it will come in the deals it will come on the conversations that we have we are having now or the wins we secured right we've told that in provider the revenue bill takes a while because your inventory builds up and then sort of when the collections or the revenue billing for that happens for our client after that we get done right so there's a there's a while even if you're in a large deal it takes a while So we baked all of that in when we've given you guidance of two to five percent. Right. So we've taken a little bit of a broader range as well this time. Right. And um, just for this quarter, the other expenses uh, did see an increase, significant increase. So what was it related to? I think other expenses is not a 
this is in the in our new collection business which we got which is the legal as the revenue grows up in that segment there is also the work we do with the business associate which is part of other expenses so that's the reason this expenses is higher but that is the, along with the revenue which we get through that so i in the no exceptional as such okay and bipul would it be possible for you to call out the uh, exit run rate in the mortgage business and uh, similar for collections in uk bfs the so mortgage we were closer to 17 million for q4 mm -hmm. um the i don't have the breakdown between collections uh, handy but collections put together we were closer to uh we were closer to 32, 33 still dominated by bfs but there are components of that which go into cmt and um, uh, cmt as well right and the words which is utilities so to that extent we look at it as a horizontal uh, but what you see when you give out to use the vertical numbers right which is banking cmt and healthcare so it kind of doesn't necessarily stack up that all collection goes into bfs now the 36 is uh, spread across the three verticals that you're talking about or is this only bfs collections no this this is all in the three except healthcare okay got it yeah thank you and all the best thank you thank you we take a next question from the line of dipesh mehta from mk global please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity just uh, one clarification i on the prior question collection when we say 36 million it is only bfs collection or you include other thing because i heard it is ex healthcare so it in a way include utility related collection business also so there we have seen 4 million swing uh, quarter on quarter but collection is not showing any kind of uptick so if you can clarify that is first question uh, second question is about healthcare uh, we for how you on judge our performance in healthcare for fy23 you think it meets your expectation or it is below expectation and or exceed expectation and what led to that deviation in your opinion and how you expect it to evolve in next few quarters uh, second sure. thing is about third question is about margin now there are few things which are very supportive to margin uh, first is about three percentage of source which you highlighted second thing is provider business recovery which is more profitable than rest of the business and third thing is now known significant revenue decline kind of segment where we have challenges from margin management perspective despite that our trajectory is different than q4 ideally it should be at least q4 and above q4 kind of trajectory so what plays out in terms of the way you think build up of margin over on uh, medium term uh, fourth question is about more about to understand this data integrated practice which you uh, launched during the q4 for tech industries how one should understand that practice what we do and what would be the potential term cross sell kind of opportunities thanks all right that's because awesome. let me take the first question and then probably i'll hand over to the board uh, so on collections uh, the number that we speak of uh, includes uh, pfs comms media and tech and it and diverse right which is non effectively all non healthcare collections is captured in the uh, collections number so the healthcare collections is part of the provider business no then ankur in that case the 4 billion swing which we are seeing in uh, diversified industries should also get reflected in collect collection revenue trajectory which is not the case so what explains that deviation so that was all entirely coming from the collection vertical i think as ripul talked about in the opening remark that growth is a function of our efforts from the large client uh, large entity client in the contract and the practice area the practice area 
as well as new wind and uh, some element of growth coming from collection facilities line. So the entire core is definitely not from that segment. Yeah, because if I remember correctly, last time we highlighted collection is around 34, 35 million for Q3. This quarter we are saying 36 million. Yeah, I mean we can we can go through the numbers. Uh, I mean that's the sure, sure. Yeah, we can so take that's it. The numbers are. we can discuss them. Sure. Okay, on the healthcare question, the page. Let me give you some color, and then I'll come to sort of where I think in terms of against my expectation. So let me take HPHS first. Right, HPHS in fiscal 22 uh, and towards the end of 21 had some pretty meaningful wins, good trajectory, right, and um, good quality wins on digital intake, BPAS, and and sort of classic member services, claim services, etc. A um, lot of them with very large uh, health plans. Um, I think H2 of this year, we've taken almost somewhat of a uh, natural breather to make sure that we execute on those complex engagements, right? Get the focus of the organization to deliver to them. Um, that's kind of one factor to keep in mind. Second, now that we are serving eight of the top 10, some with decent sized relationships, some that we just opened, wherever meaningful growth will come, these guys are already onto their third or fourth generation of outsourcing. Their process is pretty sophisticated, pretty long. And even if you, even when you win a deal in that very competitive RFP environment, the switch out from their existing invariably another partner to a new one takes longer, right? It's not classic, I have this, kind of come and help me and do that. So the, the, the pursuit timeline, as well as the execution and the switch timeline is, is longer is one of the learnings that we've taken. Now that we go and play sort of head to head with the, uh, you know, for the big health plans with the big boys, that's sort of one phenomena which has kind of played out for us in this year. Um, the digital intake platform, which we took it as an entry strategy to break into these accounts, it got us some wins, but it had some execution, um, you know, an execution cycle to develop that. And we're still on that road path to kind of develop and complete that development. So when I put those two factors, I think it's kind of moderated some of the growth in a good way that it has allowed us uh, to build the foundation more. I think the pipeline is strong. We've off to a good start in April in terms of the new deal wins. Uh, but overall, I would still expect that FY24 for HPHS will be, will be sort of mid-single digit growth and, and then sort of starts to accelerate there. Providers, we have talked enough, you know, what has ailed it, right? We play in a specific segment, which was the most impacted by PHE. Now we are hoping that uh, once PHE goes away, the market comes back in a new manner, looks for more digital solution, looks for more automated solution, and, and we are ready for that. But 23 was kind of rough, right, uh, in terms of the uh, the momentum there and the uh, lack of momentum there. So overall, um, we're kind of disappointed by how providers played out, but the team has worked hard. We've expanded our strategy. We've started off on a good note thus far in this quarter in terms of types of wins that we wanted. Some of it we'll come back and talk in, the, in when we finish Q1, uh, once we lock it out, to give you sort of how that expands it. Um, still very bullish about this segment. If I take the next two to three year view, both payer and provider, I think there's lots of headroom for growth there for us and for that segment. Um, this year for HPHS was a little bit of a moderated year, but it should pick up. That's the, the healthcare part. Um, on the data integrity practice, this largely goes the big value chain, right? At the at the entry level end is the data labeling part, and the top end it starts to get into uh, you know data architecture and 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 sort of uh, data uh, guardianship and stuff like that. Um, with the with the increase in sort of machine learning models um, everywhere, not just in the big tech companies and platform companies, but even other business enterprises starting to embrace it. Uh, we think it's an attractive opportunity. That's why we've come in. At the low end, there is obviously a lot of 
smaller players as well and distributed around the world including tier 3 tier 4 but as you get into more sophisticated stuff in the middle path not even the high end it world but even the middle path we think there is enough bulge there for us to kind of get in and and make a uh, make a jump um also this allows us to break into the tech segment right these guys are mature buyers the world serves them this becomes one of our entry strategies to get into the big big fang vendors uh, big fang uh, sort of client base and start to look around for other work so those are the two drivers for us to get into data integrity um we'll segment out the time for you and this one and where we want to play and and come back so that we don't give you the big blase number which a lot of consultants are throwing about data integrity now to come with a number which we are targeting and not go either low too low end or too high end um on the margin question um yes we had a uh, you know hard work to kind of bring to sort of where we did on uh, our operating margin uh next year uh we will obviously as i said uh, you you identified we will get some some lift from uh, mortgage recovery we'll get some lift from provider um the the takes against that is we'll get some amount of marginal impact from uh the india's accounting benefit we had in fiscal 23 uh like that, that help us in 23 so some of it will kind of not be there in 24 we have to work for that um but overall i want to be cautious in terms of what we guide it's early on right a lot of a lot of uncertainty in the market out there at this point in time so we want to make sure that we start cautiously and as things kind of play out uh we'll see if we need to do anything else to the margin guidance at this stage but for this number 11 to 12% we feel good uh we see good path to sort of achieving this number uh, at this point in time understand thank you very much to add on the margin anything to add on the margin question no if all like we are okay Thank you. We take a next question from the line of Ruchita Karge from I Wealth. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, a very good morning and congratulations on a good, good set of numbers. Uh, so uh, basically, I missed your uh, opening statement. So if you could just repeat uh, what was the guidance on the sales side and uh, if I heard it right, uh, the operating margin. is what you are saying is 11 to 12% guidance correct the revenue growth guidance ruchika at this stage we are saying will be between 2 to 5% for fiscal 24 after baking in a 3% headwind from the mortgage business year on year decline from you know given h1 was higher and about 3% headwind from the offshore onshore uh, estate rebalancing we expect with some of our key clients in later part of this year okay and um, the operating margin which currently in fy23 you did around 13% so that you are reducing it for the no 11 no 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 we did 9.4% for the full year our quarterly run rate was 11. Uh, q4 run rate was 11.6% is it the ebit margin that you are talking about post depreciation yes operating margin uh, is the ebit yeah you correct okay okay so that you are uh, guiding for 11 to 12% yes okay got it got it thank you so much that is it thank you yeah thank you we take a next question from the line of samir pardikar from icici direct please go ahead so thank you for the opportunity uh book giving question from my side so what is the mortgage number for fy23 Uh, the full year number yeah so yeah full year we were we were more like 92 93 million dollars against 216 million dollars that we reported in fy22 is my answer correct 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 okay. and one what was the rough break up of origination and servicing in that number for fy23 for q4 it was uh, it was more one third origination two third servicing For the full year, Uncle, do you have it handy? For the full year, what's the distribution? Fiscal twenty-three. Yeah, sorry, I'm not here. So for full year, I think it was thirty-five origination, thirty-five million dollars, and about fifty-eight uh, in servicing. Okay. 
थैंक यू सो मच Thank you. We take a next question from the line of Deepesh Mehta from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, this is slightly medium term question. Just want to understand uh, potential impact from generative AI or Chat GPT on overall business. How much volume impact do you expect through automation over next three five years? And can you highlight portion of business which likely to get first impacted? Where it is easier to automate versus, let's say, very difficult to automate kind of processes. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so this is a very hot topic everywhere, uh, Dipesh, rightly so. Um, we've we are thinking of generative uh, AI impact in in sort of two or three dimensions. One is the external dimension in terms of how do we bake that into our products and services. um in terms of where it impacts most logically from an outside in if you look at it uh, chat is a good good use case today when we uh, humans chat with a customer um once generative ai is able to work within an enterprise boundary right and work through sort of extracting data from different systems like a billing system a customer activity system a pricing system whatever else sort of comes out of there right product databases etc once generative ai is able to work and pull out data from very structured databases then i think uh, it's a good use case for chat to become very smart and generative ai helping humans can kind of do that um likewise theoretically we could see at this stage we'll get there medium term but as you see more and more voice to text conversion real time uh and then through that text you can use generative ai to help an agent answer or service a question better that provides for a better cx and obviously far more greater efficiency in servicing that part so so those are sort of clear examples of using it then there are obviously intermediary uses case use cases of saying can i use it efficiently for um for doing after call work right so typically if i take 10% after i finish a call to capture what happened in my conversation with dipesh uh so that the next time dipesh calls i i have reference to that that part the 10% or the 15% work can be automated right that's kind of the possibility and then you can extend it further to say i i can use it far more efficiently for internal for internal training purposes training our folks and stuff like that um as far as impact on back office systems is concerned i think that will be a little bit longer at this stage it looks like it'll be a longer haul because by definition what you're doing in back office is the exception processing if systems could process what they could doing in straight through processing rate it could have gone through right so if you look at claims example in healthcare today most of our clients would have auto claim adjudication rate depending on who they are and sort of how their systems are set up anywhere from 70 to best in class as 90 some percent auto adjudication rates what we do as an industry as first source is the fallout which is the the 30 to 10% or the 5% fallout which happens those are invariably pretty complex require data retrieval require judgment um etc cetera, etc cetera, and empathy as well kind of doing that there for us to find the specific use case of generative ai which can work specific to a client environment and the rule set that they would have done in their engine that's a longer haul and and we'll see the, we'll see movement there but you know it will require some specialized investments out there uh by by industry players and and we are looking broadly to say whom do we partner with and where do we apply it first so an area to really really watch for uh, it's an important development and we are all in uh we are on it uh, both externally and internally to make sure we use it as an opportunity and then uh, you know do what is right for our clients to kind of convert to that Sorry, long answer, but I wanted to give you a color sense of how we're thinking about it at this stage. Yeah, thank you very much for the solution. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We have reached the end of the question and answer session, and I would now like to hand the conference back over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Great. Well, thank you all. Thank you again for your interest, your engagement, and your great questions. Until the next time, thank you and goodbye. Thank you very much sir ladies and gentlemen on behalf of thank you sir on behalf of first source solutions limited that concludes this conference thanks for joining with us you will now disconnect your lines